Hello, true believers, and welcome back to another edition of BK's Bullets. My name is not Brent Casina. My name is Jim Fanis, and I went to Megacon. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself... Yeah, you and like 100,000 other people in Central Florida went to Megacon, but I was one of the few to do the Frank Miller VIP experience. It cost me $150, and I wanted to do a quick little video talking about it because these VIP experiences don't seem to come up too often outside of Megacon. I know that sometimes comic book artists do fly down for various promotional tours and events, but they do seem few and far between. So when I saw that this was a Megacon experience, I jumped on it and I uh, wanna talk a little bit about it today. So what does $150 get you? Well, it gets you a few things. Um, the reason I really did it was because I wanted Frank Miller's autograph. Now, other people can probably get that from other means that may be slightly less. Uh, for reference, I believe Frank Miller was selling his autograph for $70 or $80 as a standalone item. There were a limited number of quantities at the convention each day. So you had to walk up to his booth. There was a special line you had to wait in. You buy, you buy a ticket, and then they would call you back later in the day or give you a pre-designated time in which you could uh, receive your autograph. Um, as far as I can tell, this experience did not include a selfie. Um, although I don't think they could really stop you per se, but it was really designed more for just kind of signing and getting through very, very rapidly. Um, a lot of times in these conventions, when you are signing with a, big, a bigger name person, they do shoo you along. They usually have handlers around them. One person's collecting money and um, you know sliding the picture or the thing to be signed over to the celebrity who is signing it who is instantly sliding it over to somebody else who is shooing you out. And I have seen this numerous numerous times in my experience of going through and getting autographs with more famous people, like Patrick Stewart's the one that stands out to me. You really don't even have time to say, other than I'm a big fan. I think for me, I was like, oh, can you please make this out to Jimmy really quick? And he did it really fast and slid the page along, and that was it. You're not going to be able to stand there and take a picture because usually there's people on your side of the table standing next to you as well as people on the other side of the table. And the Frank Miller thing might have been a little bit different. I've been with Brent before in other comic book signings where um, they're a little more chatty with you, sometimes a little too chatty as you're standing there waiting for one guy to hurry up because he's talking for 20 minutes about his life. And it's like, come on, just get, get your thing signed. There's a thousand people behind you. But I get it. For a lot of people, myself included, meeting some of these artists are larger than life and they have inspired or touched you in a very personal way and you were just kind of shell-shocked and when they're actually cool people and not dicks and you're starting to have some banter, you're not like, well, you know, common decency says I should probably let the guy behind me go, but you know, you're in the moment, so I understand. The Frank Miller experience was touted slightly differently. It was a private meet and greet, essentially, where he sits at a panel and he talks to you for a little bit of time about kind of his thoughts in the industry. And um, he talks specifically, this event was about the history of 300. So I'm pulling up my phone here. I will be showing a couple of the images of the things I had signed in the background as well. Uh, things, I had one thing signed. But uh, uh, the other thing, the other things that I received, I should say, and I'm, I'm going back to read Brent's text because he was talking to me about, I was texting him briefly during the event to asking kind of who these people were. So I went into a room, it was a private room, um, where I got to sit as a VIP, because I paid a bunch of dough for this, in the first couple rows. If you weren't VIP, you were still admitted to that, but you had to sit behind me, because you know I'm king, right? So uh, the panel in included um, Andy Kubert and Simone Bianchi. I'm probably butchering these names, and I apologize. Uh, Frank Miller, obviously, and then just a Megacon employee who was kind of narrating the discussion. And it was about a 45-minute talk. Um, they, the other two people came out and sat down, and then uh, the host announced Frank Miller, big fanfare, thunderous applause. He walks out, standing ovation. He's a very, very nice guy, very soft-spoken. 
Uh, one of the things that frustrated me with MegaCon is despite me thinking this was a very, very um, routine thing for them of meeting a celebrity and having them mic'd up. And no, they didn't have that. So I'm using uh, a Shure um, SM58. It is pretty much the industry standard microphone. You got to be close to it. You got to be close to it. Frank Miller was very far away from this and the gain was low. So for the first like 10 or 15 minutes, I could hear him only because I was in the front row or like, you know, within like the first two rows rather. Um, I suspect a lot of people couldn't hear him that well, but nobody wanted to interrupt him talking, which they probably should have honestly, considering the amount of money we paid for this event. But it was kind of hard to hear him because he's an older guy. He's a little more frail. So he's not like, you know, very verbose. He's kind of like talking at a low level. And it kind of took him a while to like slide the microphone closer to like, okay, Frank, talk right into this thing. And then it started to sound a little bit better. Um, but basically it was him just kind of talking a little bit about the history of why he did the comic 300, his thoughts on doing it. And he told a story about when he was a child, he went to a movie theater with his brother and they saw, I think they said the movie was called The Last Spartan. But basically, it sounded like it was like a really crappy rendition of what 300 was. And he always dreamt about how cool that battle was. And he said he got to a point in his career where he kind of could choose what he wanted to do. And he decided it was time. But he was very nervous in doing it because the story meant so much to him. And he wanted to do it justice. So he spent some significant time kind of putting together that concept and actually putting together the comic. Um, he talked a lot about how he preferred to use a landscape portrait instead of a more traditional thing because he said the battle was ongoing constantly all around them. He didn't want to focus on individual fight scenes. He really wanted to show the scale of the battle and the kind of dynamics of it. He talked briefly about his colorist who um, was his wife or he married her either during the comic or after the comic. But um, he talked a lot about how, you know, they worked together and that was a fun experience for him. And uh, the panel asked a weird question. The guy asked, like, did you um, ever did anybody ever approach you and ask you if, you know, because 300 was such an inspiring story, did anybody come up to you after 300 and tell you that they were inspired and if so what were they inspired by and he frank miller did not like it was a it was a really dumb question honestly um but frank miller's like i don't know maybe a piercing or something like he's like no no one talks to me about the inspiration of 300 um i suspect other people like myself were more you know inspired by his art rather than the story of like, I read a comic and now I'm going to go face my fears. And like, I don't know, it just seemed kind of odd to me. The panelist was kind of weird. The questions were somewhat preachy. They didn't really give Frank a lot of time to talk. And he did speak up more at the beginning, but as the other people kind of started to come on, that Simon or Simone Bianchi guy, he rambled on for about 10 minutes about reading the comic while he was in Greece and what it meant to him, it, it wasn't really making a whole lot of sense. Um, I thought there would be more kind of like inside baseball. And there was one part at the end when the panel lead, the Megacon guy said, hey, really quick, can you tell us something that we've never heard before? And Frank Miller thought about it for about a minute of just solid pausing of him just like, I'm like, I can't believe, like, is he going to say something? Uh, ultimately, he did come back and he said that um, he felt, uh, he he did wear a Spartan helmet. He did put one on as kind of trying to get a, a feel for the padding and the, the dimensions on the shoulders. Um, but he said the one thing was he realized because of the way the eye holes are cut out, you have this tunnel vision, which really is good and bad. It really doesn't let you see anything around you, but it fo forces you to focus directly on your opponent. Nothing else around you matters. But he said while wearing it, because of the padding on the ears and because of the blinders on the eyes, he said, you felt very alone. And he said, if he could do it again, if he could rewrite the story again, he would have focused more on the isolation of these soldiers who were really, even though a collective unit we're kind of fighting independently, um, which I thought was a very interesting take. 
Um, I'm a big fan. Uh, I'm half Greek, and my grandmother raised me on all these Greek stories and Greek folklore and mythology and such. And, um, you know, there's always, there's that famous scene in 300 of like, you know, you have to hold your shield up and you have to trust that the soldiers on each side of you are doing the same to create that, that, that shield wall. Right. And, um, in a way, you know, that's their whole culture. You don't have to see the person next to you. I thought that was an interesting take that he mentioned. He said, if he could do it again, he would have focused more on that. Um, I think that kind of goes against what being a Spartan warrior was supposed to be. You're supposed to be tough. And while you are independent, you're part of a whole. You don't have to constantly look to the person you're left or right. You know they're giving it all just like you are. But interesting take nonetheless. That was something that definitely made me ponder. There's probably more ph philosophical moments or thought processes that you could have in that question and answer session. But um, that was interesting. Um, they did not, I'm sorry, they did not do a question and answer session. I just a little jumped ahead of myself there. Um, I kind of thought they were. I didn't have anything specifically to ask, but a lot of people around me were kind of gearing up. It didn't specifically say there would be a Q&A session, but there was not. It was basically just a little show and tell of Frank. Um, but it lasted about 40 minutes or so. Then there was about a 10-minute pause where they kind of reorganized the room. Again, this isn't really against Frank Miller, but a Megacon kind of um, evaluation. They were not organized. Uh, people who came, I was the third person in line to see Frank Miller, not because I was dying to see him. I mean, I was, but I didn't have anything else to do with the convention. So I just went over and waited in the line. I kind of assumed the order in which you entered would be the order in which you received your autograph and your photo and you could leave. No, um, it was basically a shotgun of where you wanted to sit. They had some areas roped off for people who were hearing impaired. They had another section roped off for uh, guests of Frank Miller, which I found out were not guests of Frank Miller, but rather um, Megacon employee, for, hey, get my buddy in kind of stuff. Um, it kind of messed up the seating. People who came in at the very end were some of the first people to receive their autographs. It was kind of a disaster, honestly. Um, the assembly line process was that you walk up, you got this ticket, the golden ticket that they would rip there. And once that ticket was ripped, then you were kind of locked in. Up till that point, you probably could have got away standing in line to get an autograph, but you wouldn't have gotten one, obviously, because they would have said, where's your ticket? And you're like, I don't have a ticket. And then they would have kicked you out. But for everybody else, um, you gave the ticket, you received a couple items, you received a limited, um, I guess the 300 comic book is either being re-released or remastered or something. But in honor of the 25th anniversary, they reprinted or did something with the first volume. And there's a litany of guest artists who, who provided various artwork. Um, I got two copies of that comic. I got one when I walked in. For I think everybody who walked into the panel got one. Then I got a second one. I don't know if one was more rare than the other or what the differentiation between them were. They were put in the plastic backwards so you couldn't actually see what the cover art was. Um, people were opening them around me. I didn't touch it until I got home, but people were opening them around me and they were different. So I think it was a total grab bag of what you were going to get. But my understanding is Frank Miller himself actually did one of those variants and they blew that up to nice, like 11 by 17, like thick card stock. Um, that was one of the, uh, one of the things they gave out at the beginning. Um, then I also got one of, I got those comic book variants and then I got to get my autograph with them. So I picked the um, cover art of The Dark Knight Returns Volume 2. Um, I think it's that picture is loosely called Triumph. Um, I've seen it called Triumph or Triumphant. Um, but it's the squiggly Batman. <laughs> That's like my absolute favorite art piece ever. So I went to CVS and I got that printed. Um, a nice blown up size, 11 by 17. Uh, I, it wasn't a full... I did lose a little bit of the image on the bottom, but I wanted to get most of it in, so that was fine. Um, I didn't think they were gonna sell independent pictures there. They did not, so you had to bring your own thing. You would have gotten an autograph either way, and since they gave you that 300 variant, a lot of people just got that signed, but since that particular Batman picture is very important to me personally, that's what I elected to have signed. Um, I slid it to him, I said, hey, could you please make it out to Jimmy? I'm a huge fan of yours, sir. And he goes, huh? <laughs> My name is Jimmy. Can you make it out to Jimmy? And he's like, oh, yeah, you got to speak up. I, I can't hear very well. And I said, hey, I, I and as he's signing it, I sit in the chair next to him and I told him I'm a big fan. 
he's an inspiration of mine. He's the reason I began drawing. And he said he appreciates my support. I guess my money. I don't know. I never bought anything from you, bud, but thanks. <laughs> Other than the ticket. Um, they had a separate person, even though it was supposed to be a selfie, they had a separate person taking, took my phone and took a photo for me, which was very nice. They actually took a few photos where like Frank signing it and I'm just looking at him like lovingly, <laughs> like waiting for him to finish. Um, didn't get to have a lot of conversation with him because as soon as um, he signed my picture and slides it over, the next person's already coming into like view. They're like, and they're rolling people through very quickly. There was no like, hey, shake his hand, nice to meet you, whatever. Like, I'm saying all these things to him as he's sitting down, uh, or I mean, as he's signing and I'm sitting down and they're already like taking my picture and shooing me away. So if you thought this was like a long, you know, a couple of minute conversation, it was not. In hindsight, I, I do appreciate that because I, as I mentioned earlier in this video, there are some people who are really long-winded who just yap and yap and yap for so long. They didn't do any of that. But all in all, it was a great experience. Um, I got to meet a guy who inspired me personally, and we got to hear a little bit about the 300 project, which was important to him and why. Um, the faults I had were with Megacon specifically, um, with just some of how they organized the event itself. The microphone wasn't great. They had a projector in the corner that was never used. Um, the way that they had people line up just didn't make a whole lot of logical sense. The way they handed you things, then you had to get his autograph. And then if you want to do a photo op, try to push those things the way that they gave you. It was kind of disjointed, honestly. It didn't really make a whole lot of logical sense. Um, they could have done it better. And I would have done it significantly differently thinking of the flow of how to get people through faster. And maybe if some of that nonsensical logistics had been worked out, you might have got to spend a little more time with the guy. But it is what it is. I'm glad I went. It was money well spent for me. I got to meet one of my heroes. And uh, it was a great experience for me personally. So that wraps up my thoughts on the Frank Miller panel at Megacon. Um, I'm sure next year they're already pre-selling tickets for Megacon. I don't know who's going to be there. I'm sure they'll have more VIP experiences. And based on everything I've read on the subreddit and on Twitter, it will remain a dumpster fire. But you will get to meet people that are important to you and take a picture and sign, get something signed. So if that's something you're interested in, the Megacon 2024 dates have already been posted. Don't know who's going to be there yet, but kind of mark it on your calendar. If it's something you want to come down and see, there will be a lot of accessibility to some really, really great artists. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys in the funny pages.